Look, it's the most depressing channel on YouTube again. Welcome back to some... I'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome back to some content that you probably... Maybe you subscribe to this. Maybe not. I've made a lot of videos about it. But in May of 2020, my grandparents said, I hope you can live the rest of your life without your family. And if you haven't seen that video, which I'm sure a lot of you have, it has like a million views now. Never thought that would happen. Basically, it's because I refused to pay my parents' rent after months and months of him claiming that he was unable to work and I let everyone know that I wasn't going to be a doormat anymore and I, I just couldn't keep providing money for someone who was able to work but just couldn't for some reason or there was always an excuse. So my family turned on me and told me to never talk to them again saying life isn't about money, it's about family and togetherness and uh, basically just gaslighting and I have a whole bunch of videos about that. It turns out my family had a drug addiction that I was un knowingly enabling for a very long time and I found out about it later when my dad tried to contact me eight months later um, but I don't think it was to talk to me because he cared I think it's probably just to slide back in to the DMs and figure out a way that maybe he could get more money later I don't want to think that it sucks to have to think that dude it really does because when he started telling me what the deal was and drug problems but not him it was just the rest of my family and I found out other things like my mom was taking my dead grandfather's pain pills and my sister went to jail for a bit and then ran away from rehab and my dad only talking to me to ask me for money um, you know just normal drug addict family stuff I guess but this isn't about all of that stuff I don't have any more I guess drama like that to talk about everything's been no contact for a year since that video pretty much until he called me and the only reason that number came through was because it was a very rarely unused number that I I think that they canceled because the phone bill was too much or I refused to pay it or something but that everything else was blocked and We've been no contact for uh, a year. And let me get this out of the way here. Not a single person in my family has ever apologized to me. Not one person. Even when my dad called me eight months later, the first words out of his mouth were, How you doing, boy? Obviously, I should have just hung up the phone right there, right? But I didn't because it's your dad. I imagine that my family thinks that I'm the bad guy for exposing them and putting them on the internet for everyone to see when my cousin reached out and he said Josh what can we do to make this stop and I thought I wanted to think so badly he was talking about the inner emotional pain that I was having dealing with all of this uh, but it wasn't it was just to get me to stop talking about it publicly because that looks bad you don't want to expose the family secrets my grandfather specifically has never apologized to me and he's the one that kind of kicked this all off he could have said something like you know that's really unfortunate um, we're not gonna pay his rent either um, he could have said any number of things I've had so much time to think about how this could have went so many different ways and I've never I've never been disrespectful to my to my elders to my grandparents I mean there was a time when I was like 17 when I didn't want to go to church and I guess I mean, that, is that disrespectful? But I've never, I've never talked to them that the the way they talked to me that day. I don't know. It it just could have it could have gone so many different ways. He could have just said okay. He could have just not responded. He didn't have to say. I hope you can live the rest of your life without your family. And so here we are, a year later, and I'm living the rest of my life without them. Oh, and by the way, for all the people who say don't talk about this publicly. Um, you know, to be honest, I didn't talk about it publicly for a very, very, very long time. I kept it all to myself. I, 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 I dealt with uh, the cops surrounding my house when my sister stole the car and got into a hit and run and it was registered to me. All these things that happened that I just never talked about. I suffered in silence because why would you ever want to talk about that? publicly why would you want to ask for help in a situation like that and who can you go to ask for help the only thing you can do is just keep dealing with it and I thought I could help I thought I could turn their life around I thought I could fix them my whole original plan was to help my dad make a YouTube channel so that people would respect his skills since his jobs didn't really respect his skills 
or that you know he could do something like like Mythbusters and build cool gadgets and it was gonna be so cool and I was hoping that I could you know maybe get him some tool sponsorships eventually because when he moved or when he when he became homeless basically he had to sell all of his tools and I know those were like his pride and joy and like I had this whole I guess it was a dream it was like a plan to get my dad back on his feet and doing something that he loved and that he could get paid for it didn't work out like that at all and it's something that I'm super passionate about is helping other people do YouTube to figure out a way to maybe if they're if they're into that if they're into making content where you can somehow make a living doing things that you enjoy that there's not a job for out there willing to pay you and I thought I could share that with him and we could have this father son thing and like I just didn't it didn't work out like that when this initially happened in May a lot of people said you know it gets easier Josh it gets easier from here on out you just got to cut them off and focus on your own life and and to be honest it hasn't really gotten easier really um, I've just become more numb I think does that sound messed up that probably makes me sound like I'm an emotional wreck that's where I'm at uh, I still think about them all the time you know a lot of people are saying you know in the comments time to cut ties with your family family is overrated parents are overrated or they'll, they'll leave a comment be a keyboard warrior and say something like I would have done XYZ if they did that to me and it's like yeah me too if I was a guy in the comments section it's easy to type all this stuff out when you're not the one that has 30 years of memories and growing pains and nostalgia with these people for me over this past year the hardest moments are when you want to share things with your family like you did when you were a kid when you were in kindergarten and you made those little noodles on construction paper in the shape of a smiley face or something and you brought it home and you want to share it with them like there's still things like that that I feel that I just want to share with them and I can't really or you know I want to share things that I think are funny or things that I would ask for help with things that I would ask for advice with like for example the other day I was tinkering on uh, I have I have this old 1975 Honda 350 XL it's an old uh, what's what's the word it's a clanker it just kind of lugs along but it's really fun for doing hills and stuff and anyways I was trying to tune the carburetor a little bit and I'm not very mechanically inclined even though I have a mechanical engineering degree I don't really know much about mechanics you know my dad was the master at this stuff growing up he would always fix any any engine that was broken or had problems he'd find a way to make it work and sometimes with if there's stuff like that in life I just want to call him up and be like hey man got a question can you help me but I can't I mean I guess I could call him but what would be the point so he could ask me for more money in some way ironically when I was a kid I had no interest in mechanics building stuff making things and because of that my dad basically had no interest in me as a kid but here I am 30 years old tinkering on a 40 year old Honda motorcycle fixing my own vehicles building things myself figuring out life myself and part of me thinks my dad would be proud my mom would be proud my family would be proud of me and then another part of me thinks why does it matter if they are or they aren't I should be proud of myself right it sounds easy to just like well let it go you know just just focus on yourself and I don't know I think it's ingrained into you growing up that you want your parents to be happy for what you did or what you've become or what you've accomplished and I was I was too and that's why I wanted to give back to them so much I wanted to that's why that's why I paid the rent that's why I bought them cars it's, um, that's that's why I did everything I did and and sometimes I'll have this moments where I'm just I just wish me and my dad could just ride motorcycles down dirt trails together and go explore the Wild West and go adventure into some old gold mines and I don't know just stupid dreams I guess put my mom in one of my paraglider harnesses and a big old wing and just kind of let her float down some sand dunes or something you know things that I know that they would enjoy there are things that I just get excited about in life that I want to share with them like most of us do right what I remember in my head the good times isn't what reality actually is anymore and making that constant disconnect between the fond memories I have and the reality of how life is now between us and them between me and them me and the family or whatever like it's really hard there's this constant I'll just be 
talking about something like, oh, my mom used to do that. Oh, my dad used to do that. And like, they're still around. Like, we're still connected. Like, it's this weird. And then I realized, like, drugs do bad things to people. There are certain things that are special to me. Things I did as a kid, memories that I hold really dear, close to me. And it's most likely that I will never get to do these things with them again. And even if I could do the, the things with them again, it would never be the same. Not after knowing that your own parents can look you in the eyes and say, we love you, we're proud of you, and then steal from you at the same time. And so like, that doesn't go away. Like time doesn't, time heals all wounds. That doesn't, you don't forget that sort of stuff. Um, and so even if we could do the things that I enjoyed doing with them when I was a kid and when I was young and we had good times and it wasn't always like this, if we did it now, it would still never be the same. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like they're the only positive memories I have of my family. And I guess this inner child in me wants to relive and reconnect with those memories in some weird way. And so here we are a year later, and that's why I've been gone for, what, nine days, ten days now? Um, and that's what I kind of decided to do. I took some time off and I wanted to go check some of my bucket list items off. Uh, like for example, as a kid, it felt like we were always around water in some way, whether that was the beach or the lake or this place in Georgia called Sun Valley Beach that seemed so big when I was a kid. And then I went back and visited it once and it was like this tiny little pool. But I can think back and clearly remember that if it was hot outside, there was some form of water. Like we were swimming, and if we weren't swimming, we were running through a sprinkler. And if we weren't doing that, we were making our own slip and slides on old tarp somewhere that probably had some mold on it. And if we were at the beach, we were, we were flying some kites. We were bodyboarding on the waves or snorkeling. If we were at the lake, we were grilling, tubing behind the boat. You know, it wasn't always like this. Like my family, we weren't rich, but we were definitely, it wasn't poverty. It was like middle class, lower middle class. Like we had a boat and a house for 20 plus years like a job for 20 plus years and seemed to do okay like I just think back and it, like it wasn't what happened it wasn't always like this so something that I've always wanted to do since I've got my dogs is to take my dogs to the beach um, since my dogs are basically like my kids I'm not having kids uh, I don't want kids HRLA doesn't want kids but that's what my parents did for me and I, I wanted to do that for my dogs to kind of, I don't know, reconnect with that. It's not the same, you know, but like, that's what I've wanted to do since day one. I've always wanted to take my dogs to the ocean and, and let them run around. So I drove 650 miles to the Oregon coast to let my dogs run around and play in the waves. So that's what my parents did for me. This probably sounds like I have so many emotional issues, <laughs> so many childhood issues and stuff. Um, and even though this trip to Oregon was a giant string of troubles, we still did it. And when I took my dogs to the beach and let them play around in the ocean, it, it meant the whole world to me. When I was 18 or 19, my dad and I started to share interests. We never really got along growing up, never really talked to each other. Um, but when I got older, um, we started to share the same interest of, of RC planes, RC helicopters. Uh, he, he liked that stuff. That stuff's okay. I, I definitely like drones and s stuff, but that was like his thing. And for me, I was always into the more extreme stuff, like actually being a pilot of a plane or speed flying down a mountain or our, you know, paramotor, paragliding. And I showed him a few videos of speed flying. I remember I was like 19. And uh, I said, we're going to do that one day, Dad. He's like, yeah, okay. Okay. And just last year before all of this happened, he got strapped into the paraglider harness and floated down the hill for a little bit. And that, that also meant like the whole world to me. And then right after we finished that, he asked me for money. So that was neat. When I'm excited about something, I just want to share it with other people. That's how I am. Food, hobbies, movies, business. I just want everyone to be able to, to do it. Um, I'm a pretty quiet person. In social interactions, I don't say much unless there's something of mutual interest. Like, I'm not just going to talk to you about something I'm not interested in. That's just not me. I'm not even going to pretend. I'd rather just say nothing and do my own thing. But if there is an opportunity 
or some semblance that there might be an interest of something that I'm interested in, then I'm like someone who does CrossFit or I'm like a vegetarian, right? Like if given the opportunity and you never really asked me about it, but I overhear something that I think is, is a shared interest, I'm going to walk over and I'm going to explain why it's awesome and why you should do it right now. And that's why I have four motorcycles so everyone can ride. Like HR lady rides, HR lady's dad's rides, I ride, other someone else can ride. I just like to share my interests with other people. If you haven't noticed yet by watching this channel, web development and what new framework just came out aren't one of the things that excites me. They're just the things that got me paid. Let's be honest. But a lot of people think that I'm like depressed and while I don't get very animated, I will agree. I do not, I'm not a very animated, charismatic person. I'm just kind of mellow, laid back. I'm definitely not depressed. I am happy and I do get excited and, and a lot of people don't believe it. So here's some footage of me being in my element, just enjoying life. No, it will. No. <laughs> So here we are, a year later, 1,300 miles just to check some silly bucket list items off because I have some mommy and daddy issues, and I think I'm doing okay, but uh, not a day goes by that I don't think about my parents. Like, I wonder what they're doing, I wonder how they're doing, I hope that they aren't homeless. I'd be lying if I said, everything is good and fine, I never think about my family or my parents, and the cord is cut, and every day is great, because that's just not true. Uh, there are certain things in life. That, that trigger me and remind me of them some more than others and I'll be taken back somewhere to a memory uh, good or bad good and bad or when I see something I'll say to HR lady like yeah my mom used to like that or we used to do that and then I realize it's not like that and it's jarring and it happens every day and that's what it's really like I've said this before in another video it feels weird it feels really weird that nothing is going wrong and I'm always expecting something to go wrong but life is definitely better it's definitely been easier and the last year has definitely been an overall increase has definitely been a, a come up you might say i've been watching a lot of soft white underbelly on youtube i don't know go google it it's about this dude he just interviews people about their life and their stories and it's given me some perspective i guess on drug addicts i've read some narc anon stuff but it's still really difficult for me to have sympathy for my family like I get that it sucks for them, but it also really <laughs> tore me up too. And I tried to help. I would have helped if they had been honest and been like, oh, we got, a, we got a drug problem, right? Like, but people have to want to change. So if we're being honest, it's hard for me to have sympathy. I just wish it didn't have to be this way. But what it's sort of given me is like a little bit of hope, I guess. Although I'm not going to be a part of the process of helping them anymore. Definitely not giving them a single dollar ever again. Uh, I, I honestly, I mean, maybe one day things will be different, but no matter the outcome on their end, my life is at least going in a better direction, but I still hope one day they can get it together and I, I don't know, live a good life, I guess. Part of me cares so much about them and another part of me doesn't at all. The amount of time between feeling really sad about them and really indifferent about them increases over time. Uh, I just wish I could share some stuff with them. As for my grandparents, yeah, dude, I don't know. Like the one grandma um, where my grandfather died, like she's a widow, she'd probably be okay. I'd probably talk to her again. The other two, no. <laughs> no fucking way. No, no, I, I, I just hear like, I've, let me address you personally. Uh, granddad 
why wouldn't you apologize to me? Why are you so are you so set in stone that you've done nothing wrong to me to tell your grandson off? And still after a year not say sorry? Like what what is your problem? It amazes me that you think that you're right, I guess, because you would have apologized in some form if you had truly cared or felt like you had done any wrong, but I guess you don't. I guess neither of you do. I guess none of you do because no one has reached out and never said, hey, sorry, or hey, your grandfather says he's sorry or anything. Like, what is, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Like, for real, it's like, I just know if I was a parent and I had a son who didn't want to talk to me after I stole from him and lied to him and did a bunch of other bad things or a grandson, I would do anything I can to be in that person's life again. I would do anything. If I was a dad and my son said, never talk to me again, I'd still try and talk to my son. I'd still try and talk to my grandson. I'd do everything I possibly could to try and come in contact and make things right. But you guys haven't. You haven't at all. It's not hard to find an email. It's not hard to find a Facebook message. It's not hard to make a, a, another fake account or an, another account and just message me. It's not hard to get in contact with me almost at all. I'm a public figure on the internet. You could easily contact me if you wanted to. But you haven't. And that says a lot about you. Honestly. No uncles, no aunts, no cousins. None of you fuckers have, have reached out to me. What the fuck is wrong with you? For real. It's been, a, it's been over a year. Le legit. <laughs> I have one cousin that I talked to and it was the one cousin that I mentioned in the very, very first video that I said that ah, we'll, we'll still probably be cool after this. And we are, and I was right. So everything I thought about you guys was confirmed true. By the way, this is just my dad's side directly. I just want to let you know uh, the mom's side of the family. You guys are fine. You guys are fine. You guys are all chill. Dad's side. Y'all done messed up. But that's what you get when you send me to church camp. You know what I'm saying? You guys can't imagine how many times I've gone over the conversation I've had, I would have with that with that side of the family. Like if I ever had to, had to talk to them again, boy. But you know that doesn't do anything for me, but just take away from my time that I could be using to do things that I enjoy with people that I enjoy being with now. And you know that's another thing that I'd like to share. Like I really wish my mom could meet HR lady or HR lady's mom or HR lady's dad because I feel like HR lady's dad and my dad have mutual interests they wouldn't get along I don't think but like things like that you just want them to meet you know and you want everything to work but that's just not how life is anyways since I haven't had a lot of drama to post about I've just been kind of doing other things to be honest I don't know if YouTube has like shadow banned my channel or something because it kind of seems that way like my subs have dropped ad revenue has dropped everything has dropped but you know it's, it's kind of an ebb and flow of YouTube but it seems like exceptional this time I don't know is it me I mean maybe it's me I, maybe maybe it is me I'm open to being you know Josh stop being negative and let's start posting only positive videos could be having said that um, if you want to go see me in my element go subscribe to the Joshua IRL channel and you can see just how the Oregon trip went and how, how everything went wrong. Why are you gotta film this? Because it's hilarious. Because it's hilarious. I don't want this in the video. Because it's hilarious. If you enjoy these rants, if you enjoy these life perspectives, uh, do me a favor, click like, click subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. And I hope you guys are doing well and maybe this helps you guys that have gone through something similar. Maybe you can relate to my feelings or flip-flopping of emotions who knows but um, that's it for this one see ya